Yes, folks, it's Tales from the Jails with uh, John G. Sutton. First of all, I'm going to talk today about uh, Alex Chalk, the Justice Secretary, who is making a statement in the House of Commons today concerning uh, a rethink of the way that uh, foreign nationals are sentenced in the court systems of Great Britain. He's going to propose to Parliament that foreign nationals, when arrested and charged with offences such as drug dealing, uh, theft, various minor offences, or relatively minor offences, uh, they're no longer processed through the court system, but will be automatically repatriated to their original their country of origin. So assuming that uh, the offender is from, say, Albania or Bulgaria, Romania, Australia, wherever they're from, you know, instead of actually being processed through the courts and sentenced to imprisonment, they are ex exported, you know, deported, floated back from whence they came with a ban on ever entering Great Britain again. They're not allowed in. So that seems like a positive uh, thinking to me. At least somebody's doing something. You've got to hand it to this guy, Alex Chalk. At least he's putting his mind to it because the prisons can't continue like they are. They will eventually disintegrate into uh, into unmanageable riot. I believe that's that's happening, even as we speak. That they are, and I'm receiving information from serving staff in the prisons that they're saying that the, that the landings are no longer under their command, that the inmates are taking charge of that and intimidating the staff, you know, which they will do. I mean, if you've got uh, young ladies on there with a big hat and a set of keys uh, and there's a, a hundred men need locking up, well, they're in trouble, aren't they? Because if they don't want to be locked up, they'll just say, no, nah, piss off, we ain't doing it, you know? And, unfortunately, there's nobody to back them up. Because, as I've been saying here for some time, if you ring the alarm bell and the Vernon girls arrive, what are you going to do? They, they ain't going to go in mob-handed and deal with them like we used to do. It, it, the days have gone. And uh, they, it, they've gone because I believe what happened is he got some kind of crazy think tank at the Home Office who thought, well, the right way to deal with uh, aggression and violence and in the prisons is to, is to bring in a calming influence. If we're bringing the calming influence of, of, of females, that will, you know, the prisoners will treat them with respect and, and, and not actually behave in a violent manner. Well, unfortunately for the think tank, yeah, they hadn't counted upon uh, the inmates that they got. They were obviously thinking about some other kind of inmates, you know, not the kind of inmates that are in there now. The ones that are out there head on spice and crack and whatever else they can get their hands on. Numerous prisons are saying that drugs are, are more available, easily available in prison than they are on the streets. What kind of a carry-on is that? So it's time that Alex Chalk, or whoever is the Justice Minister or in charge of this, got a grip, and it's nice to see that we have got somebody who is at least making a move in the right direction and trying to get a grip of this situation before the situation escalates out of control and from what I'm told by the people who are working on the inside of the prisons it isn't very far away because they completely cannot control the the prisoners that are, are in their charge which is a, a damn disgrace 
I see that, uh, I don't know if you've read it yourself, it's in the papers today, that this uh, murdering nurse who killed the, uh, all the children, was it eight children that she murdered or attempted to murder? Lucy Letby. She's living a life of luxury in some uh, jail somewhere, apparently sunbathing and taking part in karaoke and, well, I mean, that's what prison's all about, isn't it? Yeah, you gotta, you got to have some fun, eh? From, from what uh, the article about that is, it, it sounds like it's uh, a bit more like Butlins than uh, Strange Ways which is extremely weird. I mean, the, the parents of these babies that have been killed will no doubt be displeased to read that the murderer of their children is living a, a happy little life with a load of friends getting their feet up on a sunbed and singing along to uh, I Will Survive or whatever it is. Once upon a time, I was petrified. Anyway, that's enough of that. I'm not going to uh, ring the song dinger today because I'm not going to sing or read a poem. I'm going to read you an extract from my book. HMP Manchester Prison Officer Part 2. I'll just read you a little extract because a number of people have said, oh, they think I should read the book. Well... <coughs> Uh, the book is available on Audible, and uh, the, the actor that's actually reading it is Alan Turton, and he's done a brilliant job. But I'll give you my version of reading part of chapter one. HMP Manchester Prison Officer, part two. Available on Amazon now. This is an extract from chapter one. It was 11.30 a.m., so I reported to the principal officer in charge of E-Wing in his office on E-2 landing. He did not greet me with any enthusiasm, quite the opposite. Sutton, eh? He peered at me from beneath the slashed peak of his hat. On the floors, report to Officer K. As he said that, he pointed to the door. It was something I had noted about this job and this particular jail, the senior staff all pointed at doors. On landing E4, I duly reported to the officer in charge, and he seemed friendly enough, but a little odd. He asked if I played darts, which I told him I didn't really, but I knew how to. This answer appeared to disturb him, as he took three steps away from me, held up his right hand and pretended to throw an invisible dart at an equally invisible board. He repeated this action three times. Then he walked forward a few paces, reached out and acted out the removing of the non-existent darts from a non-existent board. Double twenty, he said with a satisfied smile. I was a little concerned by this behaviour, as it seemed to me that this man was either seriously disturbed or taking the piss. There were other prison officers on E4. I was one of them, and we, div we divided the landing between us, opening the doors to let the inmates slop out then go down to collect their meal from the hot plates under the central rotunda. I began locking the inmates in, cell by cell, once they had returned with their meals on stainless steel trays. Nothing unusual about this. It was exactly as I had been doing on seawing at the scrubs until I noticed that there were three inmates in a cell with just two cell cards. This meant there was one inmate in the wrong cell, so I asked the question who it was and why. Come on, boss, it's only for an hour. 
the wandering inmate said to me, but that was not the answer I had asked for. I advised him gently to get back to his own cell. As the way I saw it, if he assaulted one of the other inmates in that cell, and I had allowed it, then I would be responsible. So, having made that decision, I directly ordered him out of the cell, which was not received in quite the spirit with which it had been delivered. Jumping up from where he was seated at a small table in the cell, the offending inmate lunged forward, pushing me backwards into the uh, landing's iron railings, causing my hat to fall off. The prisoner had, in effect, assaulted me and was now moving towards me, fist raised in what I perceived as a menacing manner. Now, as an officer, I could not allow this to go unchecked. The prisoner had to know that his aggression was not acceptable. I took a look at the man. He was quite a bit bigger than I was about six foot or so and perhaps fifteen stone. Not that I was too concerned, as I had great faith in my right fist, which I then used to knock his head sideways, making it collide with the grey painted Victorian brickwork of E4 landing. Usually, in, in my experience, that would be sufficient to stop most assailants. But this bad boy just shook his head, snarled and ran at me. Now, that was a mistake, as his forward velocity, velocity increased the kinetic energy that was generated when my forehead connected with his nose. The screaming that... Uh, it ensued, attracted Officer K, who came running down the landing. There was blood and snot all over the floor, and the inmate lay spurting great red bubbles of gore, whilst moaning and generally making a kind of loud noise. Are you fucking mad? shouted Mr K, which I thought was a bit rich coming from a man who played invisible darts. And that is an extract from chapter one of my book, HMP Manchester Prison Officer, available on Amazon. Tales from the Jails.